All right, so when you've made it to camp, it's really easy to get everything set up. So we're gonna start with the tent. Now to open the tent, you've got two latches on the side, uh, and then you just lift the tent up, basically. So open the tailgate, which will give you a nice place to step here. Open this latch, open this latch. Then push the tin up. This elastic helps keep the fabric inside when you close the tent. So now that it's open, just put it down here in the channel. And you're good to go. All right, next, there's some support rods that are in this long skinny bag here. And they go inside each one of these holes at an angle. You can see with the hook part facing down. And just push them in until you hear that they hit the back of the tent. Just like that. Take the canvas, stretch it up, put it in the hole. Same thing on the other side. Okay, now the next part of the tent is the ladder. The ladder is going to be in the back and it telescopes. You just attach it right here. Undo the Velcro. Attach it right here and walk back. Okay, so obviously this is a terrible angle for a ladder. It's way too far out, so uh, you just start at the bottom and collapse one. And push it in until that seems good. Stand on it and it will settle in place. Make sure that it's still got good contact up here. Also in the ladder bag is a nice shoe bag. So the shoe bag makes it handy so you can take your shoes off when you get into the tent. You do not want to bring muddy feet into the tent. And you can just clip it with these little S hooks behind the ladder. And now when you're sitting in the tent, you got a place for your shoes. How cool is that? All right, so let's get our bedding up there. Pillow, two blankets. Now I normally don't mess with getting the bedding set up until I'm ready to go to sleep because it literally takes seconds. But to keep bugs and things like that out, I do like to do two things right after I set up the tent. The first is to close the screen doors, one on this each side. And let's open the front door up. Now to get some ventilation, uh, this has a wooden dowel on the bottom of it, so you can just roll it up. And you've got these nice toggles here, and that will keep that open for you. Close the screen to keep the bugs out. We are now moved to the inside. And as you can see, there's a nice little attic webbing here uh, for light things that you wanna have it reach. You have a bottom sheet and a top sheet. We launder these between every customer and two nice fleece blankets. You get a nice fancy Costco memory foam pillow that has an inner case, outer case, again, laundered between every customer. You also have some bags here on the side. If you wanna have quick access to your phone, Kindle, keys, things like that. And then I guess we come to the Eno twilights, the twinkle lights. Uh, click it again, you get red and then green and then blue and then off. And as you can see, you get some tremendous views. So when you wake up, you'll be treated to a beautiful sunrise. In the evening, you'll get a nice view of the stars. Before you close up the screen, it's nice to keep this out of the way so it doesn't dangle and get in the way of the ladder. You could put it behind the ladder, but then it blocks your shoe bag. So it also has a nice toggle, so you can just bunch it up, pin it back, one at the front and one at the back. Then we can zip up the screen. Okay, so step two is making the camp comfortable. Come to our awning and unzip it from the back all the way up to the front. Fold the cover completely back at the front and the back 
and then undo the bottom of each of these three Velcro straps that keeps the awning secure in the bag, tucked out of the way. Now this is super easy. All you do is grab this and start walking. And when you get around to the back, this attachment point is gonna go straight to the tent and it's gonna keep it nice and taut, give you 270 degrees. 270 degrees of shade. It helps if you push on this a little bit with one hand while you get that lined up and slide it into place. Last step, flip this up. Makes the awning nice and taut, and if you do have any rain or anything like that, it's angled so it'll all run off. Now technically, you are officially done with the awning. There's nothing else that needs to be done. It's a nice aluminum I-beam construction. Uh, however, some areas do have a lot of wind. Inside each of the three main supports, there is a strap that you can use to stake out the awning. Highly recommend doing this every time you stop. We're gonna use sand screws. They're a little bit better than stakes, especially in soft stuff like this. Uh, you get four sand screws with your rental. So we'll show you how to use these right now. You don't have to come very far out, but you do wanna make it so that it's not in the way when people are walking and things like that. Comes with this plastic tube that gets inserted into this ring. Push down as you screw it in, and it will start to take hold and do the work for you. You just need a little bit of light downward pressure so that it doesn't just um, act like an auger and make a big hole. You want it to screw into the ground. Now loosen this strap enough so that you can get it around the, the bottom of the sand screw on its collar. Just like that. And let's tighten it up just a couple more turns. Well, let's tighten it up another 180 degrees to really kind of lock that strap in place. Uh, it doesn't have to be super tight and you can adjust the tightness afterwards here. All we're doing is making sure that if a big gust of wind comes up, that it can't pick this up, fold it, and bend it. Okay, with the base set up, you're gonna to wanna to start taking things out of the Jeep and getting camp set up, get your fun and games going. To make that super easy, we include a tire table. Uh, now the spare tire table is also gonna be in the back it's gonna be in the very bottom because it fits real nice and it kind of holds the other things together. So here's the tire table. It has two support legs on these detents. You pull it out, flip it around, stick it in there. If you forget this, you'll just look at the frame and see that there's only one way it can go. There's only so many thing, holes for these to fit into. And then loosen these a little bit. Righty tighty lefty loosey. Pull this out enough to clear the tire the width of the tire, and then come at an angle here and go behind the tire, and then down like that. Put some gentle pressure against the back while you use your hips to hold this, the front end tight, and then reach over and tighten those two screws. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. You can release the middle leg. Give yourself just some extra support. Now we have this very sturdy table that'll hold 50 pounds at least, wouldn't sit on it. But now when you're getting camp set up, you can just pull things out of the Jeep, set it on the table, and you're good to go. All right, let's talk about the elephant in the room. This guy, the sun, he's blasting, blasting the desert right now. So we wanna take advantage of that. So we're gonna set up our solar right away. Now oftentimes, since you have the awning on the other side, that's where you're gonna be hanging out a lot. So it makes a lot of sense to run your solar panel out the passenger side door. You can't just throw a solar, pan solar panel out or just put it on the ground where it's perpendicular to the ground. It needs to be not perpendicular to the earth, but perpendicular to the sun, whose angle changes throughout the day, right? So periodically throughout the day, adjust your solar panels so that they are directly facing the sun, both in position in the sky as well as the azimuth or the angle from the horizon. Nerd! On a 150 watt panel like this, if you don't have it placed in the best position, you may only get 10 or 15 watts. However, you can get 90, 100 uh, if you have it facing directly to the sun. If it is windy out, they do have loops in them that you can stake them down so that they don't get tossed around as well. So, how can you tell if your solar panel is placed optimally? Look at the shadow. The shadow will tell you everything. Uh, if, you are, if you're directly perpendicular, 
then the shadow on the ground is gonna be the same physical size as the actual solar panel instead of stretched out or shortened. And it's also gonna have square edges, so you're not gonna be misangled. So now let's make the connection at the battery and see how well we did. Unplug the one that goes to the vehicle that we were using when driving, and then just plug this guy in. So for instance, here is the Jackery Explorer 1000, which does have an AC inverter. We've got it on 120 watt solar panels right now. And it is pulling in a respectable 87 watts. So that'll charge this thing up, no problem. Now we pack our rigs to the gills. So you've got two goose gear drawers. So this has room for dry storage, uh, oil, cooking supplies, coffee, things like that. The top one's gonna have all of your cutlery some scrubbies, and all of your dinnerware, cups, mugs, cutting boards, sink, that type of thing. So think of the top drawer as your food prep, and the bottom as your uh, pantry. And you already filled this fridge up when you left town. The fridge we like to set on either one or two degrees, because it is Celsius, not Fahrenheit. Uh, this is fridge from South Africa, so it's in Celsius. So don't be scared when it says one degree. You did not freeze your yogurt, even though frozen yogurt doesn't sound bad. We got a beautiful sunny morning here on the Alvord. We're gonna pack up camp. It's super easy. We don't even need a computer. We're just gonna do everything in reverse order, which means the awning's gonna go away first, and then the tent, and we're good to go. So we're gonna start by removing the ground screws on the awning. Now you'll notice that that frees up easily and then you can unscrew it the rest of the way with your hands. Get a couple turns in, release or tie down, and screw the ground screw. Now you may remember that these straps were tucked away into the frame. To make this super easy, just pull the strap all the way back up to its starting position. Give it a couple folds and then it'll be nice and firm and will slide easily into the frame. Do the same with the other one. And into the frame it goes. Then just pull this center support back down flat, and then we release the awning from the catch. It's easiest if you put a little bit of pressure towards the catch so there's no pressure on it while you're wiggling it out of its place. And then when it's out of position, you're just gonna go back around. And then just walk with the awning closed make sure that the uh, fabric doesn't get hung up anywhere. It should just be hanging down. Now, before you smash it up here, remember that we have three Velcro tie downs and you want to reach up before you start rolling the awning up and make sure that those are free. Otherwise, you're just going to trap them behind what you've rolled up. Um, so fold that in. Start by folding the triangle just a little bit and then just roll really tight. And most of the fabric and material is right here on this strap, so that's why we roll it up right here, because this is the, the one that we need to make sure that we get nice and tight. Put the strap through the hole, pull it tight, Velcro. Do the same to the other two. This guy's fine being loose. Pull the bag back over. And zip from the front. You can close easily. And Alicab gives you nice YKK zippers, so they're tough. So with the tent, you have to take the blankets and pillows out. You're just gonna leave the bottom sheet and the top sheet. Get them nice and flat. Not looking for perfection here. Just, you don't want any big wads of sheet. And open the doors if they're not already open. If you don't leave these doors open, when you close the tent, it's gonna be like trying to smash a balloon that's tied shut. In the back, you can leave uh, the screen zipped, but make sure the outer door is not zipped so that there's a place for air to escape. And that is basically what we're looking for when we go to close the tent. All right, last step is the tent. So we get out our little slender bag for these Awning supports, unhook it, pull it out of the hole, slide it into the bag. Now, 
The only thing to really keep in mind when you're closing the tent is that all the fabric needs to be on the inside of the seal. This bungee cord is gonna help you with that, but you're gonna need to use your, your hands a little bit. And uh, it helps if you've got someone else to spot you, they can go around to the sides and poke the fabric in. First thing, take your bungee up to the center of the tent and grab this strap, start to pull it down. And you'll see how that bungee is helping keep the fabric together. Now, as you get close, reach in with your arm, pull the fabric in as much as you can to the sides, to the inside. And in front as well. All right, now right about here is where you need to just walk around really quick. See if you got any fabric sticking out. Yeah, see this fabric here on the side. Start as far up as you can without smashing your fingers. Poke the fabric in. Now the tent will rest nicely. And so we finish closing it. Take your latch. Same thing on the other side. And now of course the last thing we have to deal with is the ladder and the shoe bag. Uh, the ladder, just lift up on it. Keep your fingers out of the way and push these in. Let gravity do the work for you. Put the Velcro back, grab the shoe bag, and these all go in that loose bag together. And that is that. We are ready to roll. Okay, so let's talk about all the gear that you get when you rent a Jeep with Overbuilt Adventure. I wanna show you a close up of this gear using the GoPro. Hopefully I won't make you too swimmy, uh, but let's take a look at everything you get. First, you get the Covia barbecue all-in-one stove for your cooking, a French press coffee maker, tea kettle, the butane fuel that you need for cooking, blowtorch if you need to start any fires or make creme brulee, uh, a nice enameled pot, two double-walled aluminum insulated cups, some silicone grippies to grab hot items when you're cooking, cooking utensils, you get tongs, spatulas, two small cutting boards, also two large cutting boards, a little funnel if you want to make pancakes, uh, scissors multi-tool, four separate knives, can opener, and of course all of your cutlery and dishware that you need. Some things to clean up camp, you get some disinfectant wipes, some camp suds, a scrubby and a pot scraper, and we even threw in the kitchen sink. You also get the table that this gear is set on. Uh, it has a nice net for under table storage, it's good for eating, playing cards. Two camp chairs that also come with uh, sand mats so that the legs don't sink in if you go somewhere that's sandy or to the ocean. You get two Costco memory foam pillows, double cased. You get two king size comfy and warm fleece blankets, an assortment of camp towels, Zippo hand warmers with fuel. If you've not used one of these before, they don't burn a flame, it's a catalytic chemical reaction, but that'll give you six hours of heat each use. Uh, also, for keeping you warm, we have these things that we call water babies. It's basically an algae bottle. You boil the water, throw it in the wool sock, and you put it underneath your bedding at night, and it will keep you warm until morning. You get two sets of twinkle lights. One is already inside the tent. This one you can use to hang around the awning or your campsite, if you wish, or on your hammock. You also get these ground screws, a Sven saw, which will help you cut wood, hammer, work gloves, hose for the shower, Nice 10 by 50 binoculars, and these are great for just looking at wildlife or astronomy. Some Gorilla Tape. Solar panels to power your battery. You get the Garmin Overlander. That will be your guide. Uh, there are waypoints already saved on there for you if, uh, if you need ideas on where to camp. You get a Garmin InReach Mini, which is an SOS device. If you happen to go on a hike and you fall and break your leg, then this will send search and rescue your way. And then for your power needs, you're either gonna get this Dometic solar generator or the Jackery solar generator. It depends on whether or not you need 
uh, AC inverter. If you have devices that run on AC, uh, then you'll get the Jackery, but otherwise the Dometic is a little more efficient and smaller. An, uh, an emergency air compressor, which you can also use to charge up the solar shower. And we can't forget two hammocks. So we use this checklist to make sure we use this checklist to make sure that every customer gets every bit of this gear every time they go out, that it's all been cleaned and ready for you to use. And we also have a little list of things for you to bring. Basically all you need to bring are your clothes and your toiletries. Uh, you don't even have to bring bags for them because we've got storage inside the Jeep uh, for both your clothes and your personal items, sunscreen, toothpaste, toothbrush, things like that. So basically we've tried to think of everything that you might need or want when camping. This is basically the same stuff that I take personally when I go out. And we try to send you out with high quality gear because our goal is for you to have fun. When you rent one of our Jeeps, we want you to just have a true adventure, enjoy yourself, and uh, get outside, explore, and have a great time.